Alrighty guys, and we got another game from DreamHack Winter. This one was from the playoff section. I think it was later on, I don't remember. I think it might have been winner's round, like three or something like that, I don't remember. But, it is between our Zerg player spawning in the top right of Yansu from Team Startail. It's life. His opponent in the bottom left. From Team Alliance, it's Naniwa. Now, I did choose this game very special because I am a huge Life fan. Uh, Life, my favorite Zerg player. Um, mainly because I am a huge fan of uh, Ling play. And Life is known for his extremely good Ling play. So, uh, we see him doing his uh, extractor trick that he... 9 times out of 10 will do, or if not 10 times out of 10. And Naniwa. Naniwa, our Swedish player, uh, well known in the pro circuit, a uh, multi-time Premier League player. I believe he was in Premier League every season uh, in Europe. Looking forward to seeing what happens coming into 2014 with Season 1 starting soon. we got qualifiers going on. Um, uh, this weekend, as this is obviously being recorded, it'll probably come out, I think this will be going up the 4th, I believe this will be going up, so that'll be the day that the American qualifiers are, at least, so I'll be looking forward to watching that. And 15 hatch here, out of Startail life, and still no pull down. It looks like he's going to go for, yeah, 3 hatch before pull here, out of Startail life. Very greedy play out of him, but uh, I think he's going to get away with it. Looks like a gateway expand out of our Protoss player. There you go. There's the three hatches, and there we go. A little bit later on his second gas here by Naniwa, but he is a pro gamer, and he by far has his builds down by now. He's going to be looking to put the pylon on the low ground and then be taking... This expansion soon, life spotting, no expansion quite yet, and going, okay, I'm pretty happy with this situation, and he's just going to go on with his day. Spawning pool going down now for life, and yeah, he's he's just going to play fine for right now. He knows that you, he had his zealot up here, he knows that uh, this was a gateway expand, so he's going to be playing a little bit He's going to be a little bit scared right now. He doesn't have a pull up at all. He doesn't have any defenses. He went three hatch before pull. And there's a zealot moving across the field here. There's going to be second zealot at home. Expansion going down now. But this zealot is going to do some damage here. It might do a good amount of damage to this expansion. But with six zerglings on the way, they should be able to kill it. The expansion is definitely not going to go down. It'll just take a little bit of damage here. He did spot the expansion going down now, and it's like, okay, this must have been a very fast third base. He's going to send a second Zealot over there to try and deal with this, but with the Lings out in the field here, they'll be able to help deal with this. As uh, they will go in here, nice micro there, keeping that one alive. Doing the best he can with the situation he has. And six Zerglings versus two Zealots. The Zerglings... Um, it's going to be a close fight, but with these weakened Zerglings, they definitely won't win that fight. Roach Warren as well on the way, so it looks like it's going to be a Roach play out of, uh, out of life. As we did see these two players play in, uh, the IEM New York, and life winning that best of five series... 3-1, which was, I believe, the semifinals, actually. So he won that 3-1. Uh, a good win for him. Uh, Naniwa, probably probably upset with that loss. Um, Could have definitely played a little bit better, but, you know, life making the big stops here. Five roaches on the way and another overlord. He is going to be putting on some aggression here, but look at this lovely wall here. Two of uh, two centuries at the wall as well, so he's going to be keeping that safe. And seeing that these links don't have speed yet is probably going to tell him, okay, something different's going on here. Don't think he's spotted the roaches quite yet. Nope, doesn't spotted them yet. 
But as soon as he spots them, he'll be like, ah, okay, you're making roaches. And that's a decent number of roaches. So now he's got to be expecting, okay, there's going to be some aggression going down. Ling's back at home. Come on now. It's got these two sentries, though, in the wall, and they should easily be able to deal with that. Recall back to home. Pylon is going to go down. Nice force fields here to try and uh, keep that pylon alive for a little bit longer. And mainly just to protect the units while they recall. Second gas being taken at the main. No gases at the third or natural yet. And at this point, he's just moving across the field. Trying to, to attack his opponent, do some damage here. As all those lings going to get taken out. And Naniwa is going to go... F looks like he's going to try and take a third base here, but that is not going to happen with this number of units on the field here. A lot of sentries, though. That's really what's going to make this army very strong here. They're going to be able to uh, hold this army in place and wipe out a good number of units there. But Lair now on the way. Third gas going down. Uh, I think we'll be seeing a Hydralis Den soon. You see we got a, a Twilight Council back at the Protoss base as he breaks the rocks and takes his third base. So uh, Naniwa definitely looking to take this into uh, a later stage of the game while Life kind of wants to do some damage in this still early portion, this pre-10 minute portion of the game here as, you know, some units going to swing around the left side as uh, lots of gates going up. He's got three going up over here, two. At the natural one in the main, that is six gates total. That's a good number of gates. That's that's very well, a very good amount for some aggression here. Getting plus two attack and blink, so we might see a big blink stalker attack come out of a uh, out of Nanny Wasud as we see Burrow and Glau reconstitution and the infestation pit. So I think I don't think he saw the no he hasn't seen the Twilight Council. I think at this point, he's almost expecting a Twilight Council to come out of his opponent. He's saying, okay, this seems like something you're going to do. And look at that. We see Dark Shrine and Robo, fourth base going up for life. But this is going to be scary for uh, for our blue Protoss, or for our reserve player, because he really isn't expecting a DT attack. And if he slips some DTs, you know, gets a Warp Prism, puts them in the main, sends some to the third base... You know, maybe tries to sneak some in at the natural and attacks all three bases at the same time with them. That does a lot of damage there. We see we're going to have Swarm Host. The Enduring Locust is also coming. Two Swarm Hosts right now. And these roaches, nice job using the burrow there. They don't have the uh, tunneling claws, though. So, or not tunneling. Is it tunneling claws? Oh my god, I feel like a noob. I feel like a noob. No, it's not. It's not tunneling claws. It's um, the 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 roach, the burrow movement for roaches. I'm not even gonna try and think of it right now. It's completely slipped my mind. Um, yeah. So we're just we're just gonna move away from that. But we do see warp prism on the way. So it looks like gonna be putting some DTs in there soon, as well as uh, looks to be a second robo and the robo bay. So he's gonna get in. He's going to be going into uh, to Colossus here. I don't, I, I don't know if he's seen the uh, seen the swarm host yet. Let's see. Has he seen the? Wow. Look at that. I feel like I'm in game. I'm I'm playing as Naniwa. But um, the, he has seen the infestation. But he's seen a swarm host now. So that definitely makes sense to do the uh, to do the um, to do the colossus here we see four more gates go down he is going for that aggression here and the siege oh oh boy oh man we had to pause there for a second this is live you didn't know no but uh, we see the siege going down for the swarm host the swarm host do take down the oh actually they don't kill the rocks leave it with 11 health and now he is just going to move out and move his swarm host back, move him around. That is the best way to use swarm host is to push him forward, pull him back, do this, do that, you know, what have you. We see some roaches here poking at the third base. No cannon is up quite yet. They're going to pick off a few workers. 
Not too many, though. We see uh, Swarmhost just moving down. Swarmhost in a nice position. Not Swarmhost, but Locusts are moving down. I'm going to pick off a probe right there. No, the probe is going to get away. Roach is moving around, trying to poke at this natural, see what they can do. Make sure there's no crazy fourth base going up, as there was a planned one to go up. Oh, a fourth base? But look at this. Big zealot warp in at home. Swarm host fighting at the third base, but look at this. Huge zealot warp in at home. This is going to kill a queen off, going to kill a spine crawler. Gonna do a decent amount of damage, but with these, uh... With these roaches, the problem with these roaches is, look at this, such a late 1-1 one, one out of our Protoss player, or not our Protoss, but a Zerg player, he is really going to be having a tough time dealing with this uh, with this Protoss army who's going up, who's about to finish 3, plus 3 attack. He already has Colossus, already has extended Thermal Lance, and is getting that Zealot charge. So, <clears throat> this is, uh, this is going to be a tough situation for, uh, for our uh, Zerg player, as look how fast these swarm hosts just absolutely get annihilated here. Four Colossus is a crazy amount of Colossus, and he can go at two Colossus at a time production. That is amazing right there. As we see, oh, the Locusts might actually pick off a Colossus here. That would be huge. They do actually get themselves a Colossus, lowering the numbers to four now. Are three, I mean, but with two at a time, it's going to go to five very fast. Roaches, big annoying over there. Corruptors on the field now. Lots of Zerglings, lots of Roaches. He's going to go for a big uh, attack here, it looks like, with the Greater Spire on the way as well. Look at that. The Greater Spire. Broodlords. Oh. Come on. Uh, buddy, you know you want to be a brood lord. He's supply block, but he wants to be a brood lord, and he's gonna be one, guys. Don't worry. And brood lord. No, brood lord. There we go. Fifth and sixth bases going down. Lots of stalkers moving out. And the, with the Broodlords and the Infestas, he is going to be fine here, it seems like. Uh, one whiffed fungal, but he does land another one, which helps out there. Oh, the Blink Stalkers, though, getting right underneath of these Broodlords, and every one of them is going to fall very quickly. Not a, not a fabulous situation there for our Zerg player, as he just lost three out of his six. Uh, Broodlord is just that number absolutely cut in half right there, and does he have an Observer? Where's the Observer? Observer! Observer! Where are you? You're over here somewhere. Where's the Observer? Ah, oh, there it is. I knew it was here somewhere. I was like, it's somewhere in this mix of Protoss, but there we go. There's the, the Observer, and he's going to be moving in here. Swarm host. Move back to the, probably the most defensive position you could do. Ling's trying to do some damage here, but I don't know, they will pick off the cannon, but the Zealot will be there. Ooh, just pick off the cannon too, but this Protoss Force looks like it might be a game ender here as, yes, um, life is maxed out here, but these are Blink Stalkers with this Colossus count as well. Two at a time, mind you, in the Colossus count, they're going to be able to do a lot of damage here. and More Colossus entering the mix now. He's up to five. Gonna have a sixth one here as well. Six now. This is very scary, but these Zergling runbys are really doing a lot of damage back at home to keep uh, uh, keep Naniwa kind of back at home here as we see more swarm or more broodlords joining the mix here. Attacks all over the place now. In the third, in the natural, in the main. Just forcing Naniwa to move to every different position he can now. And, but still, this force is terrifying. He does have the Blink Stalkers, though, and they will do a lot of damage if he can keep the Broodlords protected. But now, here we go. One-shotting Broodlords right now. Absolutely annihilating them. Oh, nearly loses the Observer, which would be a huge pickoff right now. But he is going to force away this Protoss force now. 
and these Zerglings have been very annoying back at home. They've, uh, there is no mining happening in the main, as everything is pretty much mined out, except for the geysers, which now we're getting mined from. <clears throat> Third base is being mined, natural's being mined, but there's not a lot of mining going on here. Loss of second gas, so his gas income is very low. Obviously, we do see that he is mining from this fifth base. He can mine from a sixth base if he wants. And he has an army made of free units. That's always helpful, right? And the corruptors on the field. He could even use the corruptors to help try and deal with this, uh, deal with the Colossus count. Or he can just try and wipe them out with the free units. Either one is okay. Um, I think he's going to try and use the swarm host and stuff to try and pull this army around. As I'd like to see him uh, get some. I don't think he actually has any. He does have some observers. He has one. Our overseers. He has one there and one in the main. All right. Um. Yeah. Locust just poking. As some fighting going down. Spotted this fifth base going up. And now this is a very. This is the iconic New Day Zerg Death Ball. Corruptor, or not Corruptors, but Swarm Host, uh, Broodlord, Queen. That's pretty much Death Bolly right there. Because Queens are really good once you have them with full energy. They are absolutely terrifying. Look at that, 181 energy. That's a lot of transfuses right there. And here goes the Swarm here. He's going to jump right on top of the Swarm Host, landing a few transfuses, but it's not really enough here as... This Protoss force is going to have to push back now with the Swarm Hosts in position. They are going to knock this army back. and But he's still got to be careful with these Broodlords because one nice blink underneath of them and they are all in trouble. Luckily, this Stalker count has gone down to 28 and the Broodlord count is at 17. That is 34 Broodlings that can fly at you at a time. These are Blink Stalkers, so they will be able to help deal with that. But the problem is, is the Swarm Host will eventually do a lot of damage. He's getting plus one everything now with the uh, with the melee attack. Uh, he actually doesn't even have a layer anymore. Oh no, there it is. There's the layer. I was like, um, he had a layer in the main, and, and it died. But uh, he rebuilt it at the third base. A lot of, of uh, co uh, Colossus here. Blah, I can't even speak. Seven Colossus. We see Psionic Storm, plus two armor, plus one air weapons coming down. Protoss Force going to try and kill off this other base here, which doesn't have a rally point. That's why the drones are just hanging out here. And uh, it looks like they might be able to do that. Oh, one Colossus will go down here. More... Uh, Units will go down as he's not really using that blink all so well. And life is on the attack now. He is moving in. He's got this death ball -y force now. And they are going in and they are wiping things out. It is terrifying for Naniwa right now. Dropping in worker supply. Dropping in supply period. He's going down. Down about 15 supply now. About 25 supply now. Down about a little over 30 now. And he's just forced back into the natural. The third base is dead. Natural is mining out. Fourth base, yes, that is up. So that is beautiful. That's going to give him some more time here. But the problem is, this three gates that he's losing, he's going to start getting supply blocked soon. And now he's now they're going for the natural, which has the two robos, has the fleet beacon. Tempests are trying to come out, but Tempests are going to get wiped out very quickly with the addition of the Corruptors to the mix and one tempest yes tempest do a lot of damage to massive 80 damage to massive which are brood lords but one one tempest is not going to do a lot now he has two okay you still can't one shot a brood lord but you know if you add one more you could one shot a brood lord he doesn't really have the economy for that and he's supply block so not really going to help out in that sense. Uh, that Both the Robos are down now. Another Tempest gets taken out. And the Natural is gone. This is really not looking good for our Protoss player. As he is forced back into that third base. Trying to hide there. This is a the supply. Like beautiful area there in the main. He's going to pull up into the main base here. 
try and defend there. Queen's hanging out in the front, dropping some storms on top of the swarm host. Blinking underneath of the Brood Lords, trying to make something happen here. He's actually doing a great job of it here, as life is plummeting in supply now. Blinking underneath of all of these Brood Lords, almost every Brood Lord has been taken out now. He's down to five, four now, three, two. Two is going to be where it ends, as, you know, Naniwa is pretty much out of forces now. Done with Colossus now. He's forced to pull back. Only three Swarm Hosts remain, but. Hive is on the way, five more Broodlords, and 22 Roaches. 22 Roaches are going to do a lot of damage here if they get on top of this army as plus two ranged attack and plus two air attacks are finishing up. Two more Broodlords fall, but just kind of pulling back into this fifth base uh, to regroup his force. One Zealot and one DT are what move around in this force here as they are both instantly wiped out there this fourth base is all that remains of nanny Wall's economy he's down to 27 drone or probes he has to make this army work he has to do damage with it if he doesn't he is in trouble he's moving into the fourth base now he's gonna try and wipe the fourth base out and infesta dies instantly and so does a viper but this is kind of scary here the, he doesn't really have a lot of Stalkers. He has 23 Stalkers, 2 Colossus, and 1 Archon. That's what has to defend this. GG is called by Naniwa as he knows, yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to beat this force. Your army is just too big. I don't have enough Stalkers. If I blink under, they'll just all get wiped out. And that's that. So, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for game number tw 2 between Life and Naniwa. And we'll see you guys next time.